Okay, I want to talk about something very quickly. As you all know, Gypsy Rose Blanchard has a rare chromosome disorder. She has a micro deletion of a chromosome. She has 1Q21.1. 1Q21.1 micro deletion leads to a highly variable clinical presentation, meaning that symptoms and severity differ significantly among individuals. Some carriers may have no obvious clinical findings, while others experience a wide range of issues, including developmental delay and or intellectual disability, congenital heart defects, seen in about 23.4% of individuals in one study. That's over one fourth of all people with this have congenital heart defects. Neurological issues such as seizures, around 23% of them. That's about one fourth. Psychiatric or behavioral abnormalities, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, recurrent depressive disorder. Now, in my own opinion, Gypsy Rose Blanchard suffers from a dual diagnosis of, I believe, two cluster B personality disorders, which there is no medication cure or treatment for other than the treatment of very intensive, not just cognitive therapy, but psychotherapy. I, in my own personal opinion, believe that she suffers from a lot of sociopathic and narcissistic traits. But in my own opinion, as a non-professional, I do believe that she suffers from psychopathy and borderline personality disorder. And this also is linked to failure to thrive in infancy. Now, she wasn't diagnosed until, what, 2011? And this exact rare chromosome disorder was not even found by physicians or science until 2008. So why was she diagnosed with failure to thrive at a very young age? Well, she was premature. She was a very low birth weight. She was in the fifth percentile of height and weight, which is extremely low, meaning that 95% of all other babies of the same age range as Gypsy Rose were bigger than her as far as height and weight. That could have contributed to the failure to thrive. Management focuses on treating these specific manifestations, for example, addressing heart conditions with standard treatments or managing developmental delays through therapies, early diagnosis and treatment of severe associated conditions, particularly cardiac defects, are crucial for a better prognosis and potentially a longer, healthier life. Now, I addressed this in my last video talking about what things could have been fraud or could not have been fraud as far as Gypsy and Dee Dee and a lot of the charities and a lot of the different places that they were, um, nonprofits they were going to, even the state that they were going to for different help. Speaking about that, like something, a chromosome disorder, such as Down syndrome, the oldest person to have ever lived with Down syndrome previously held a world record at the age of 52. And of course, throughout the entire human history and throughout the 20th century, the average lifespan for somebody with Down syndrome was about 25 years old, with the majority of them passing away in their 30s or even their 40s due to the symptoms of the disorder itself. Today, that life expectancy is around 60 years because in the last, well, especially the last 40 to 50 years, Science and modern medicine, Western medicine has evolved so much that we were, are able to, not just with medication, not just with pharmaceuticals, not just with pharmaceutical drugs. We are able to surgically do things that we had not previously been able to do 60 years ago or 80 years ago, let alone centuries ago. This has significantly improved the life expectancy of somebody with Down syndrome, which is amazing. But somebody with Gypsy's particular chromosome disorder, we don't know what the real life expectancy is because it wasn't founded until 2008 and it wasn't diagnosed in Gypsy until about 2011. Because of this variability and the possibility of mild or undiagnosed cases, the true incidents and long-term outcomes are difficult to estimate precisely. Like I said, they don't exactly know what the average life expectancy is for somebody with this specific rare chromosome disorder. 
And that's because it hasn't been founded long enough for them to be able to study it scientifically, medically, to be able to come up with what that average is. Because people have always said that Dee Dee Blanchard was telling people that Gypsy didn't have a long life expectancy. Part of that may have been true. Part of that may have been exaggerated. She might have always known from the moment that she was born, by looking at her, that she had something chromosomally or genetically wrong with her, just by how she aesthetically looks. Maybe she was assuming that just like Down syndrome or other rare chromosome disorders, Gypsy had a limited life expectancy. But it isn't possible that she would have been able to know what or how long that life expectancy is for specifically Gypsy and her specific chromosome disorder. It says many affected individuals live full lifespans, but health complications can occur. Now, right here, it can't actually tell. Now, this is confirmation bias. This is when you seek out information, and AI is terrible at this because of how you word a question or how you put information into AI. It is going to tell you a confirmation bias, something that you want to know or reaffirm what you think you already know, depending on how you're asking it. And this is why I absolutely hate AI. Never mind the fact that for every single request, it is using equivalent to three bottles of water and enough electricity to literally light up all of New York City. But AI data centers are displacing hundreds of thousands of real humans here in America. Now, if the water waste and consumption wasn't enough, if the electric waste and consumption wasn't enough, the real life implications of these AI data centers on real humans, let alone all the other species that is being endangered by them being built, if that's not enough. I don't know what is enough to get you to look into it and to research, do your homework, and to reconsider using AI. But as it said, it doesn't know what, what the life expectancy is for somebody with this rare chromosome disorder. But, but it says here, many affected individuals live full lives. It doesn't know that because it wasn't founded in 2008. So that's, hasn't even been 20 years yet. That's not long enough for them to do long-term studies, lifelong studies, to see what the average lifespan is, to be able to therefore conclude that many affected individuals live full lifespans. And this is why I say you have to be careful with the information that you're getting, not just from AI, but from the internet. You have to have that in intelligence to be able to discern that. Because right there, it's telling you how there is no, they don't understand what the life expectancy is. But then at the very bottom, it's still trying to positively make you feel like, yes, they can live full lifespans. They don't know that for sure. I would say hopefully in another 20 years, after 40 years or so has gone by, they might have a better understanding of people that were adults 40 years prior and being able to follow them and be able to see how long they lived, how they passed away, what they passed away from, et cetera, et cetera, to conclude that many affected individuals can live full lifespans, despite and regardless the health complications that can occur. Now, if you look at people globally that have been diagnosed with this rare chromosome disorder since 2008, much like our Miss Gypsy Rose here, you can see a lot of them share very identical features to Gypsy Rose, okay? But it's also, Gypsy has a lot of features that are prominent not only to her father, but to her mother's side of the family, Yes, she has eyes that are very much symptomatic of this chromosome disorder, but her eyelid and the shape of her eyes also runs in her family as well, not just on her dad's side. We know that Mia's eyes and the shape of them look exactly like Gypsy's, and it, she has been, allegedly, her stepmother has been watching Baby Aurora, and she recently said that Baby Aurora, because she has blue eyes, does look just like Mia. She's got the same shape and everything. But this woman in the UK is the poster child for this rare chromosome disorder, and Gypsy looks exactly like her in the face. But she also shares family genetics, the same way somebody with Down syndrome can often look like their family members. But you can tell when somebody has Downs. You can tell when somebody has this. Gypsy has cousins and second cousins on her mom's side that have the same eye shape. 
and dad's nose.